So I've been playing The Last of Us 2 for more than I thought I would for a first impressions video and I have some thoughts on it. This isn't an in-depth review, these are just my thoughts on the game. Some will agree, some might not and that's fine, it's expected. So I'm going to go through this video in three important chunks for a game like this or really how I personally rate a lot of games. We're going to first dive into the gameplay which includes everything that has to do with that environment is the second which includes things like world building graphics art style animations immersion you get the drift and finally i'll give my spoiler free thoughts on the story thus far so let's dive into all of this you don't know how large that group is how armed i don't care so the gameplay to put it simple, the gameplay is fantastic in The Last of Us Part 2. Ellie provides a different contrast to Joel with how she moves and we got a taste of that in the first game. She's more agile, quick in comparison and you notice this in this game, especially now that you can jump. It might be a simple mechanic but definitely changes the flow here a bit in compared to the first game. The fighting in this game is also more strategic to the point where I kind of wanted to fight the enemies more than I wanted to shoot them because of this dodge and hit mechanic. It's basically boxing sometimes but with a knife and this mechanic can be used with the human enemies as well as runners but obviously if a clicker gets a hold of you it's pretty much game over. But this mechanic elevated the fighting for me and I'm really excited to see this possibly implemented in the faction's multiplayer successor Naughty Dog is working on whenever that comes out. There's also the melee weapons if you want the fighting to get a bit more interesting, a bit more frantic. Depending on the melee weapons you get, they could end the enemy's life in one go or require a few more hits and all have their own unique animations to go along with that. The animations in this game are pretty insane. There's a lot of them, but we'll talk about that later on in the video. The upgrades in this game also add more depth to how you personally want to play. You can mod your guns to increase things like fire rate and stability, but these mods can only be added at the workbenches, but you can still upgrade yourself on the fly via supplements that upgrade several paths and they add extra paths as the game progresses. But these upgrades are meant to suit your preferred gameplay style, from focusing on survival capabilities with upgrading your health to being able to craft items faster in those tight moments when you need a Molotov to stealth upgrades, which have been my favorite so far to upgrade because I love being stealthy and going through sections of enemies and strategizing my way through but then they add more paths like upgrading your aim and upgrading your bomb effectiveness not sure if there's more beyond this point but upgrading these has been fun and has made looting places more rewarding obviously this goes the same for mods to your guns you need parts for those and you have to scavenge for them as well in terms of progression throughout the game and how story gameplay has varied, I'll let you find that out on your own, but it's pretty much been varied so far, which I appreciate. But I will say this, a section earlier on in the game with the horrors and the map, I really was not a fan of that section to the point where I almost stopped playing yesterday, but luckily I didn't. Overall, the gameplay in The Last of Us Part 2 has been solid and a lot of fun so far. But again, for me, I expected this. Now, let's move over to the environment section of this video. So what can I say about the environment in The Last of Us 2, which again includes things like graphics, immersion, world building, animations, etc. With that in mind, this game looks mind-blowing to me it has been looking mind-blowing to me so many times i've just admired the world naughty dog has built it's ridiculously detailed all over the grass the water the rain cars everything has packs of detail to where sometimes things almost look photorealistic and when i go back to the original game the jump is just crazy in contrast obviously the original game was on the ps3 but still that adds to the level of how much we've come from the ps3 era thanks to like developers like naughty dog 
There's also the animations of the characters from swinging your melee weapons and fighting enemies off to upgrading your gun with a new mod to Ellie knowing to run fast when enemies are around to running normally when she's safe to walking out in the rain and she puts on her hoodie and taking it off when she goes back in to getting shot and falling back on the ground and trying to get that headshot to so many things. It's the little things here and there that really adds the realism to this game making it so immersive even something as small as everyone having a name i know we heard about this before the game's release but i didn't think much of it until i played the game and shot someone in the head and had someone else call their name it adds that shock that i actually killed a person and not just some of these random enemies the world of the last of us 2 is dark and beautiful and i would personally say the best looking game on playstation 4 right now but for me, again, I expected this. And finally, let's dive into the story of this game. What the hell are you doing here? You think I'd let you do this on your own? So I'm going to do this part of the video in freeform styles, basically no script because I didn't really see how I was going to compact what I wanted to say to you guys. I've honestly recorded this part of the video several times because I, I, just, I just keep rambling on and on. I'm going to try not to do that this time around, but I want to start off by saying this game is not trash. Like I said in the first two parts of the video, they built an amazing world with the environment, the immersion, the animations, top tier, top class. The gameplay is amazing. Um, and how the story is told, not the story itself, how the story is told is amazing. How the story is told is told really well. It's told in a really great way. The voice acting, the animations, everything is really like top class in this game. It's really good. It's really, really good. I would recommend somebody else playing this game as well, but if they just kind of not pay attention to the story as much if they loved what was the essence of the first game, because it's going to hurt you in the second one. So I'm going to preface this by saying I'm going to have spoilers in this part of the video. It's really hard not to talk about the, the spoilers if I really want to talk about this game. So if you don't want any of that, please exit the video. And if you're here, by all means, let's continue this discussion. So... The story. For me personally, I'm going to say this right off the bat. Why did this have to be the story? So I originally gave this game the benefit of the doubt of saying, I understand the reasoning of why Joel had to die. I understood it. All right. I didn't accept it. I understood it. But it very well could have been another story. I don't know why this had to be the story specifically. Let's talk about how, how Joel dies. Now, I've seen a bunch of people online uh, state that Joel... Joel would never fall for something like this. Now, for me, I can give you some reasoning for that. Joel has been in Jackson for a few years. Uh, maybe he kind of calmed down in terms of, you know, suspiciousness. But even if you remember, if you actually play the game, Joel is suspicious um, when they're asking him if they want to, you know, uh, can we take your horse? Joel is suspicious of the whole situation off bat. He's not comfortable with the people that he's there. He doesn't know them, him and his brother. Um, Tommy, they, they, he doesn't know them. So he's already suspicious of the situation. He's already asking questions. So Joel is suspicious. Joel didn't just say, yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to go with this. You know, he was suspicious, but he had to, he, like, I'm trying to give reasoning as to how the situation happened, but it happened. Joel died in the most gruesome way, in the most gruesome way. He died. It was depressing. It was sad. And it, it, it was sad basically is what i'm trying to say <clears throat> so they then they get you to play the game you go throughout the game the you meet other characters that become your side characters you have uh you know people like dina and jesse and you know they're great characters dina and jesse they're great characters but they're not joel that magic that joel and ellie had in the first game doesn't exist in this game it doesn't exist in this game i don't care how many people can tell me it's a masterpiece in terms of gameplay world and how the story is told masterclass the story itself not for me so for me personally it's like why did this story have to be this story 
this I know Joel did something wrong, but like if you see the the second game, both Abby, the person who's killing Joel because uh, he killed he killed her father, both Abby and Ellie they start they slaughter so many people in the most gruesome fashion. It's not like you know I'm putting people to sleep. They completely demolish people in this game. So if you're gonna play this morality game. What about Ellie and Abby? Ellie also kills two other people, one person who's pregnant. Like, I know it was by it was by defense, but still, it's like it's like, are we really talking about morals here with this game? And that's why it's justified that Joel had to die? No, I, I don't I don't accept that. It doesn't make sense to me. And also in the trailer, why did they have to were they trying to be a Marvel movie? I don't get it. Were they trying to be a uh, it's it's because in the trailer they portray this game to be a revenge story and you you know you think somebody like Dina might die and Joel and Ellie will go on this <clears throat> epic adventure to you know to try to rectify this and Joel was gonna go ahead and you know help her out because in the trailer he, you have Joel there saying why I'm not gonna let you go ahead did you really think I was gonna let you do this by yourself but in the game it's actually Jesse who says that. When I saw that part, I was so annoyed because I was wondering where that part was because Joel died already. So where's that part? When I saw that part and I saw it was Jesse, I'm like, come on, man. Come on, Ren. Like, I get the reasoning for why Joel died. I get it. Again, I'm stating this a bazillion times because I'm going off of my points here. These are literally my points while I played through the game. Um, and one of the most annoying parts of this game, it's not even because she kills Joel. It's not even because of that. You play as Abby for half the game. If you guys remember when I was telling you that give this game a chance, uh, this game is going to sell well, which it is, um, basically talking positively about it because I've there's no way, you know, there's no way this game would be, you know, really would not be really great. You know what I mean? Um, but one of the biggest things I mentioned in those videos was that I really hope the rumor in regards to the gameplay was not true but it is it is true you play as abby for half the game half the game let alone she's the person who killed joel put that to the side i don't care i don't understand developers who think this is such a artistic beautiful way of telling something a lot of other games have done this two-sided story aspect of a game a lot of story a lot of games have done that the only game that i've personally accepted that has done that is halo 2 I can't really think of another game on top of my head where I was like, yeah, I accept that. I know there's some people who don't like Halo 2 for how the story was told, but I loved Halo 2. How they told the story with the Arbiter and Master Chief, both sides of the story, they did it well there. Master Chief didn't have to die. If Ma if the Arbiter killed Master Chief and, you know, we were playing as somebody else and, you know, the Arbiter was the main character, no, I would be pissed off then. And in terms of how this game does it, it's another example of, a game that tries to do this but is horrible is Halo 5, another game in the Halo universe. They get you to play as Agent Locke who's hunting down Master Chief. You're not artistic. <laughs> in Last of Us 2, they try to do that same thing. You guys are not artistic. I'm not trying to say this to hurt anybody or to be completely negative to anybody, but it, you're not artistic. You're playing this morality game when... What is the morality when Ellie and Abby destroy everybody? What is the morality when this world that you're portraying is completely gruesome and disgusting and everybody's disgusting? Where is the morality? What? Where's the morality? There is none. So you're trying to tell me the story that, hey, Joel had to die because of the moral moral reasoning? No, I, I, I completely, I don't buy that. And then they try to get you to, you know, like Abby. Like Abby, she saves these kids, uh, you know, and all of that, all of that stuff. They try to make you seem that <laughs> that Abby's a good person. All right, I. This is the the simple thing that I have in my notes here is I don't care. That's how I felt about Abby's side of the story. I don't care. I don't care about Abby's childhood. I don't care about Abby's grown uphood. I don't. I don't care about Abby. Personally, I don't care. Okay, this game, you fell in love with this game because of what? Does Naughty Dog not understand? It's, it's, it's Ellie and Joel. That's why you fell in love with this game. Not the world. The world is part of it. The gameplay is a part of it, but it's Ellie and Joel. How could you just kill half the weight of this game? 
and just let it be. That part, that part, I just, I just don't understand. Okay, but again, the story is told well. I just am not a fan of the story. And the game got so long. It was so long. At one point, I was kind of done because I was still playing with Abby. And I was like, how long is this? I'm not a fan of this. You know, I don't want to play as Abby. But I'll say this. Abby's gameplay is fun. Abby's gameplay is hella fun. Abby's out here uh, bare-fisted, knocking out zombies left and infected. Knocking out infected left and right with her bare fist. I love that. That was all so much fun. So I tried to ignore, you know, the story in itself because nobody wants to play. It's not even about it's nobody wants to play as it's somebody who's not the main character. I told this to one of my friends who doesn't who was not he's an Xbox guy. You know, he doesn't really pay attention to the gaming verse that much, but he loves Halo. I told him, imagine if they killed Master Chief and you played as Agent Locke <laughs> who killed Master Chief for like half the game. How would you feel about that? He said he would have hated that. That would have killed the franchise. And I said, I agree. <laughs> I agree that that's a horrible way to tell this story. So for me, I started to think, I'm like, why couldn't this story be something different? Like, why couldn't this story be a story, a redemption story? Okay, Ellie finds out that Joel, that Joel lied to her. She finds out the truth. And there's this new rise of the fireflies and Ellie goes cross country trying to uh, find the new fireflies to basically essentially sacrifice herself because she has another opportunity to change what happened in the first game. Joel goes across country chasing her and you get this diverse story between them two. And if you needed to kill Joel, you needed to kill Joel, then you could have done that at some point. All right. But give us the whole game with Joel and just end it at Last of Us Part 2. Because nobody wants more. Nobody wants more than this. Neil Druckmann, I heard him say he wants a Last of Us Part 3. He could make a Last of Us Part 3. Neil Druckmann, I can tell you, I do not want a Last of Us Part 3. You completely destroyed my excitement for this franchise going forward. I really hope you're not working on Last of Us Part 3. Uh, I really hope whatever you're working on next is not as depressing as this game. I, I don't understand everybody calling this game a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece in how the game is told. It's a masterpiece in the gameplay. It's a masterpiece in the world. And I applaud every team at the Naughty Dog that built all those parts. The story itself is just something that doesn't hold up with the rest of the game. I'll give this game one thing. I did cry at one point in the game. I did cry. I'm mad enough to say that. And do you know which part of the game that was? Was at the end when... Almost, honestly, I'm tearing up right now just thinking about it. At the end, when Ellie and Joel, you know, they're talking to each other. Uh, actually, I'm not even going to say it. It's actually pretty sad. They actually pulled your heartstrings with that, that part of the game. But this, this game that we got here, it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. In terms of story, will I play the game again? Maybe, because I love the gameplay. I love the world. I love what they built in terms of immersiveness with this game. Will I play? Will I care about the story the second time around? No. I'll play this if they give me New Game Plus. I'll definitely play it. Would I recommend it to somebody else? I definitely would. It's a good game. Nobody, anybody saying it's a trash game? It's not. It's a good game. Just the story. But that's, re <laughs> but that's really it. That's the... Uh, my thoughts on this game. And I'm gonna let me know your thoughts down in the comments below.